All right, so the first thing you're gonna do as soon as you get in the kitchen is identify what hood you're cleaning. Today, we're scheduled to clean the main line and the prep line. How you identify a main line is you're gonna, you're gonna have a char, you'll have a range, you'll have a flat, you'll have fryers, sometimes you'll have salamanders and bigger things, but for the most part, it's gonna be the bigger hood, the dirtiest hood. Let me take you over here and show you our prep line. And the reason why you wanna know the difference between a main line and a prep line is because sometimes the main line and the prep line are on different frequencies. So the main line will be every three months and the prep line is every six months. So for a prep line, it's gonna be, for the most part, a range, a steamer, maybe a fryer, maybe an oven, something like that. All right, so after you identify the hoods that you're cleaning, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the fans are running. If they're not running, then you're gonna to wanna to send either your helper or go up there yourself and make sure that the fan on and off switch is on. If it's on then you, and the fan's not running on the bottom, then you're gonna to wanna to put that in your deficiency report and contact the restaurant and let them know that you had a deficiency at their job pre you cleaning and that they need to schedule an electrician to come out and check their fans out. But look, here's the, so here's the switch for the prep line. Everything's operating like normal. The squeaking you heard, that's normal. That's just the belt slipping on the wheels. It'll, it'll, it'll eventually turn off or stop squeaking once the uh, fan gets, gets up to operating speed. The, the, fan for, the fan switch for the main line is in an awkward spot. It's not always like this, but whenever it is, you just kind of got to hunt for it, but it's back here. And that's also good. So now that we got our fans tested and we know what hoods we're cleaning, now we're gonna clear off all space, blow out all pilot lights. And the reason you're blowing out pilot lights is to prevent the pilot from burning up plastic while you wrap the hood. So you're gonna wanna clean off, you're gonna wanna take off anything that you don't wanna get wet. Spices, uh, plates, anything pots pans most of, sometimes they'll leave pots and pans with boiling water and stuff even if there's food in it it's better to remove it out of your workspace and then put it back when you're done at the same heat if they're cooking or whatever you want to put it back when you're done and then notate it so you can let the customer know just in case their food isn't complete in the morning or whatever the problem is but you don't want to leave it on there and potentially contaminate it See, so like this right here, they left a lot of uh, empty dishes that are, they look like they have just been cleaned. We're gonna move all of it and cover all of this area up because, you know, maybe the, the plastic might fall or something like that. If it falls, then we don't want it to ruin all of this. So it's better to keep everything covered, cover as much as you can the plastic. Okay, so like right here, they left chips. These are, these are buckets of chips. We're not gonna move this because there's already a lot going on in the kitchen. They just got an order in. We don't wanna ruin any of that. So what we're gonna do instead of moving it is we're gonna completely cover it and put clips on the bottom to ensure that no water, no chemical gets in the chips whatsoever. Right here, fryers, all this, you, you're gonna wanna get a piece of plywood. Three quarter inch plywood is what I recommend because it's sturdy and you can sand on it. But you're gonna wanna put plywood over all fryers and cover them separately. This, this way, if the, fry, if, the, uh, if the plastic falls, no water can potentially get in this fryer and then they end up cooking with it the next morning, serving people contaminated food. You're also gonna wanna make sure fryers are completely off. So you can feel up here, if you feel heat coming out, just a little bit of heat is okay. It won't melt the plastic. That's mainly what you're focused on. Anything that will potentially melt plastic, you wanna get rid of it. But if it is, if it is, if it is a little hot, what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this up. And as you can see right here, there's a pilot light that we're gonna leave it on in this case. But for the most part, you're gonna end up having to turn, turn it all the way off and it'll turn that pilot light off. 
what I recommend is that you leave it off and that you put it in your report for the restaurant to relight it in the morning. This way you don't damage equipment. All right, so now that we inspected everything and we took everything out of our work area, we're gonna start taking off all the filters and we're gonna take our pre-washed pitchers. Just in case anybody doesn't know. So how you take these filters off is you lift up, pull the bottom down, they come out. These, these filters right here can be very sharp. So make sure you have some gloves on or you grab them by these handles. But as you can see, sometimes they, they either don't have handles or they put them on backwards. So be careful. All right, so sometimes, as you can see here, this filter, this filter right here won't come out. So you, the edges of the hood typically are gonna be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. They have to be because somebody got it in there. So what I do is I try to move it over and it comes right out. Catch cans are another thing you wanna be mindful of. These get lost all the time. So what I do is I always take account what ca how many catch cans there are and where they go. Typically where they're at is where the kitchen put them because that's where the grease leaks the most. I know you guys see me standing on all this equipment. You can't be scared to, to get up and close and get, get, get in there with it. It's the only way you're gonna get these filters off. Okay, so here at Facilitech, we use a proprietary app. It's specifically just for our company to log everything that we do at the job site. We take all before and after pictures. It's also a, a good uh, liability control. So I, I would definitely recommend it. All right, so key spots that you wanna look for on a hood while cleaning it or scraping before you spray with a power washer is behind the upper track that's all this area right here. The upper track itself, that's this area here. The bottom track, and typically you're gonna wanna look closer towards the edge, cause it gets real hard to, to kinda get in there. And up the duct, on, this, on the back side of the wall, where you can't spray it up here, from, right, from down here, you're gonna wanna either scrape it going up, or have whoever cleans from the fan down Spray it or scrape it. And then before you, but before you spray or, or before you scrape anything, what you're gonna wanna do is cover this section to catch all grease so you don't want any grease falling down behind equipment, potentially causing a fire. And that's it, man. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Go down to uh, powerwash.com if you want any supplies shown in this video. We'll see you later.